This is the Grand Canyon Hiker Dude Show, presented by Bright Angel Outfitters, and it exists to help you have the best possible experience in the Grand Canyon. My name is Brian Special, and today we take on another of the iconic hikes below the rim. This time, we're going rim to river to rim, or as it's often referred, simply rim to river. Now, when my own passion for the canyon was reignited a couple of years ago, this was the first big hike that I took on. I knew I wanted to do rim to rim again at some point, and so I figured this would be a good place to start. Now, logistically, rim to river is easier to plan than rim to rim, and you can do it all year round, whereas with rim to rim, you have to plan around the north rim essentially being inaccessible from December 1st until May 15th, unless hiking in deep snow is your thing. Well, with rim to river, you start and end on the south rim, which of course is open 365 days a year. Now, the traditional rim to river route is going down the South Kaibab Trail to the river, with the option to continue on another half mile to Phantom Ranch, and then going back up Bright Angel Trail to the finish in Grand Canyon Village. You can certainly do it in reverse if you'd like, down Bright Angel and up South Kaibab, but that's typically discouraged as there is no water availability whatsoever on South Kaibab, and that trail is also steep and exposed to the direct sun, so going up Bright Angel is the better option for most. Now, going up South Kaibab is more doable in the cooler months if you know how to manage your water, but if it's a warm day or if it's your first time in the canyon, I would highly recommend going up Bright Angel. The Bright Angel and South Kaibab trailheads are more than four miles apart, and there's no parking and no private vehicle access to South Kaibab, so the best plan that i found for doing this hike starts with parking my car near Bright Angel trailhead. That could mean around the Bright Angel Lodge area or at the backcountry office, where there is plenty of free parking available. Having your car close by at the end of this hike is something that you will no doubt appreciate because you're going to be worn out and not having to deal with waiting for a shuttle is definitely a good thing. Next, you'll hop on the Village Route shuttle, that's the Blue Route, and go all the way to the Visitor Center. There's also a Hiker's Express shuttle that runs three times every morning that is far preferable to the regular shuttle. The Hiker's Express will take you straight to South Kaibab without having to change buses. Just check the Park Service website for times on that. But if you're on the regular shuttle, you will change buses at the Visitor Center and take the Kaibab route, the orange route, directly to South Kaibab. If you want to skip all the hassle of the shuttles, you can call for the Zantera taxi anywhere in the village. This is one of the best Grand Canyon hacks that there is. They'll pick you up and take you directly to the South Kaibab Trailhead. I think as of late 2023, that service is only 15 bucks for up to three people. So it's extremely affordable and it can save you up to an hour's worth of time on the shuttles. Highly recommend the taxi. All right, those are the logistics. And now it's time to hit the trail. What follows will be my thoughts as they happen from the trail. This is the iconic rim to river hike in the Grand Canyon and we pick it up as we start down the South Kaibab Trail. I've done this hike many, many times before and I get excited every time too because this is about as good as it gets. You're at the Grand Canyon, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Gonna put in a lot of work today on the legs, um, just over 16 miles total uh, from South Kaibab Trailhead all the way to the river and then back up to Bright Angel Trail. Add a little bit more if you wanna go all the way to Phantom Ranch and have some of their famous lemonade. So going down South Kaibab, start of the Rim to River hike. The first thing you're gonna do is go down a steep set of switchbacks called the chimney. They're steep, but they're short. In the winter time, they're uh, probably gonna be iced in. You're gonna need traction for your, uh, for your shoes, micro spikes in order to deal with the ice because it stays shaded uh, and icy here just about all winter long. Okay, right after the chimney, you'll no doubt notice a warning sign that's probably the most graphic warning sign in any national park. On it, you'll see a painting of a man who is on all fours without his shirt on, and he's violently vomiting right there on the trail. He's affectionately known as Victor Vomit, and he's there to warn hikers, especially inexperienced day hikers, that what they're doing can be extremely dangerous if they're not properly prepared. Specifically, it warns people not to attempt to hike to the river and back in a day. From the south rim, distance can be deceiving. While the bottom might not look that far, I can promise you that it is. And if you're not careful, you can easily meet a similar fate to Victor. The trap of the canyon 
is that you go down first and then you go up. So the easiest part is first. You go down, it feels easy, anyone can do it, but it's beating your legs up and you still have to gain a lot of elevation on the way back out. So I see so many people on these trails that I just worry about because I hate seeing people let their lack of experience and their ignorance get them in trouble and have that turn into a, a rescue and a less than stellar, obviously, canyon experience. Because all we want is for people to love this place the same way we do and have the best experience possible. And biting off more than you can chew is the easiest way to have a memorable but awful canyon experience. Don't go too far unless you are prepared for it. Don't be like Vic. Okay, our first stop down South Kaibab comes right at a mile in at the social media famous Ooh Ah Point. Now, depending on the time of day, it can get very crowded at Ooh Ah, and you'll quickly understand why when you see it. This is the first spot where you see those panoramic canyon views. Ooh Ah can definitely get a little nuts, especially at sunrise. It can be a lot more crowded than what you, what you just saw. Um, it's kind of the Instagrammable, easily accessible place for the uh, tourists to come. It's only nine tenths of a mile down from the trailhead, so a lot of people make that their their destination when they come to the canyon. But don't worry uh, if it's too crowded; the views are even better than that the farther down we go. Indeed, in just a couple of more switchbacks, you'll see why the South Kaibab Trail is the trail not to miss in the Grand Canyon. First time I ever did this hike, this is what I remember more than anything else, this spot right here. I remember the sun was just coming up and the canyon just revealed itself. And I was like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. And as many times as I've done this since, I still get that feeling every time when I come to this spot. So this is just between Uwa Point and Cedar Ridge, probably about maybe 1.1 miles down the trail and the canyon opens up. And this is how the views are just about the entire way. This is why South Kaibab is the greatest trail in the entire world, in my opinion. You guys are gonna get so tired of me saying it, but this trail is the iconic Grand Canyon experience. The South Kaibab Trail. You get the whole experience because these views are out of this world. Now I say that and I also give you a disclaimer. There are no words, there are no photographs, there are no video clips that can possibly capture how spectacular the Grand Canyon actually is. You have to see it with your own eyes. I've never seen a video clip or a photograph of the Grand Canyon that, that captures its size, its scale, and just its overwhelming beauty. You have to see it for yourself. If it's not on your bucket list, you might want to put it there because you won't believe what you're, uh, what you're seeing special. The Grand Canyon Hiker Dude Show is brought to you by Bright Angel Outfitters, a company my wife and I founded that's mission is to help you have the best possible hiking experience in the Grand Canyon and beyond through our free content like this show and our YouTube channel and products born out of my own experience below the rim. Now, when I was doing my first rim to river and rim to rim hikes, I was really trying to figure out what worked and what didn't work for me, especially when it came to to backpacks. Went through a bunch of them, including lightweight running vests. The thing that I loved about those running vests was the front pockets. Found I did not like stopping and taking my pack off every time I wanted a snack or to grab something else, but running vests just don't have that much storage space as they're more for ultra marathoners and long distance trail runners. So over hundreds of miles in the canyon, I developed our flagship rim to rim pack which is a 22 liter pack that has plenty of storage capacity for anything you need on a long day hike. It has been absolutely perfect for me on rim to rims and even my recent rim to rim to rim. The rim to rim pack is lightweight and simple. It features a fully insulated pocket for your water reservoir and other snacks you want to keep cool. And of course, our front pack straps, which include three pouches on the front of the shoulder straps. So you can carry a water bottle, snacks, your phone, or anything else you want to keep easily accessible. The Rim to Rim Pack is perfect for any hike, whether it's in the canyon or beyond, because after all, if it can survive in the canyon, 
it can survive anywhere. The Rim to Rim Pack from Bright Angel Outfitters is coming soon. All right, back to Rim to River. The next stop is at Cedar Ridge. At this point, we've descended 1,140 feet over a mile and a half. There are toilets at Cedar Ridge and spectacular views in every direction. Cedar Ridge is a mile and a half from the trailhead. So it's a pretty good day hike for a lot of people, but we're going Rim to River today. We still got a long way to go, another five miles before we even get to the Colorado and then begin to think about the long hike out on Bright Angel. But the views will never stop. Iconic the entire way down, they'll keep you going. Depending on what your goals are, uh, it is really nice to stop and take a break at Cedar Ridge, then beyond at Skeleton Point, tip off. Just places where you can take a little uh, pressure off your legs for a little bit because you're doing a lot of damage to your legs going down, believe it or not. It can feel easy, but you're probably going to feel it um, on the way up. You're not going to feel it until it's too late, to be honest with you. Uh, I remember the first time I did this hike. I went down too fast because it feels so easy going down and you're so excited you're running on so much adrenaline when you're at South Kaibab and you're at the Grand Canyon maybe for the first time so you got to be careful about going too fast because going down feels easy but the problem is once you get to the bottom you still got to go back up so you can do significant damage to your legs and it makes the way out a lot a lot tougher because your legs are hurting and sore and your joints are hurting so be careful going too fast on the way down. Now, another hard lesson I learned on that hike was about using trekking poles. That's something that had never even crossed my mind beforehand. But let me just say, in the canyon, I have never, ever hiked without poles since. Downhill on South Kaibab does not mean a smooth path the whole way. In fact, the trail is rugged and it's rutted out by the daily mule trains. And there are also giant steps that can be over knee high that you have to go down. Having poles to brace yourself and transfer some of that energy to your uh, upper body and away from your knees and joints is a real leg saver. You'll appreciate having them on the hike out as well. There's a couple of switchbacks below Cedar Ridge, and then the trail, I'm not going to say levels out, but there's no switchbacks between just below Cedar Ridge all the way to Skeleton Point. So it's kind of a nice respite a little bit. Uh, but Skeleton Point is our next stop, and that is a mile and a half from Cedar Ridge, three miles from the trailhead. At Skeleton Point, we're three miles below the rim and have descended more than 2,000 feet. The best views in this area, in my opinion, come just a few more steps down. If you go three switchbacks below Skeleton Point, you'll find what I always say is the best view in the entire Grand Canyon, at least what I've seen. Um, just absolutely spectacular. You see the river for the first time. You can see where Phantom Ranch and Bright Angel Campground are. You can see the Tonto Trail. Still a long way to go to get to the river, but this view right here, three switchbacks below Skeleton Point. Absolutely spectacular. Not going to do much better than this. Now this is also the point where you'll see the steepest drop-off that runs right next to the trail. But you're never in any danger on South Kaibab or on any of the corridor trails for that matter as long as you stay on the trail. The trails are well marked and typically four to six feet wide the whole way. If you do have a fear of heights, it's easy to just stay on the side closest to the canyon wall and you'll have no trouble at all. Now, as we descend toward our next stopping point at the tip off in another mile and a half, we hit the notorious red and white switchbacks. Just be thankful we're going down the red and whites instead of the opposite direction. These are the most formidable switchbacks on the South Kaibab Trail, in my opinion. About 500 feet of elevation loss in a very, very short distance. Oh, it looks like we're going to come up on a mule train here as well. Cool. Always love seeing the mules. Yeah, mule trains are a common sight in the canyon. They can be doing trail work, as this one was, or carrying tourists or supplies down to Phantom Ranch. If you do run into one on any of the corridor trails, all you have to do is simply step to the side and follow any directions the guide might give you. Now, at the base of the red and whites, we are three and a half miles from the top and just past halfway to the Colorado River. The tip-off is the last stop before the river. There are toilets and a shelter here where you can take a break in the shade as the sun exposure on South Kaibab is just relentless. 
At tip-off, we are four and a half miles from the top, and we have descended 3,260 feet, with just over 1,600 to go over the last 2.1 miles before the river. Just past tip-off, we're below the canyon's Tonto platform and entering the inner gorge. Here, the landscape changes dramatically, and the trail turns red. We can see the Colorado for most of what's left of the descent. The switchbacks are also steep for the rest of the way. Our below tip off now, and you can see the Black Bridge down there, which is the, means we're at the bottom. First time seeing the Black Bridge, and you can also see the Colorado is running green today. It's usually either that color or a muddy brown, one or the other. It's a, uh, in my opinion, it's a lot prettier when it's green, so this is a good day. When you finally see the tunnel at the bottom, you know that you've made it. The light at the end of that tunnel is the Kaibab Suspension Bridge, better known in the canyon as the Black Bridge. From here, you can see up and down the Colorado and off to your left, perhaps even a resting group of river runners at what's called Boat Beach. On the other side of the bridge, we follow the trail for another quarter mile or so to the junction with the North Kaibab Trail. Don't miss the interpretive signs along the way that tell the story of the Native Americans who once called this spot home. At this point, we are at the bottom. You can either go up this way to Phantom Ranch, about a quarter mile or so up the trail, see what Phantom has to offer, and have some of their famous lemonade if you, uh, if you so desire. Or you can cross the creek right here, get some water, use the restrooms, which are just over there, and then you're on Bright Angel Trail, and you cross the Silver Bridge and be on your way out. We're about seven miles in. Got about nine, nine and a half miles to go, and it will all be uphill. We've lost 4,800 feet so far. We will gain 4,400 feet on the way back out of Bright Angel, because South Kaibab is about 400 feet higher than Bright Angel. But a lot of work to do, long way to go. This is where it gets serious, so it's a good time to fuel up, make sure you have enough water, drink some electrolytes, have some food, even if you don't feel like it, because it's hard to feel like eating when you're on the on a big hike like this. But it's important. And uh, get yourself ready for the long trip up Bright Angel, which is a whole different hike. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Let's go do it. We'll skip Phantom Ranch on this trip, but if you've never seen it, it's certainly worth checking out. There are snacks available at Phantom, in addition to that often talked about lemonade. And you can also purchase and mail postcards from the bottom of the Grand Canyon, which will then be carried out by mule. Others like to dip their feet in the river at the aforementioned Boat Beach, just follow the signs to get there. Or you can dip your feet in Bright Angel Creek, which you can't miss. The water is cold, but it is oh so refreshing on tired feet and legs that definitely need some rejuvenation for what is still ahead. There are flushable toilets and multiple spots to fill up on water in the Phantom Ranch area, and it's the last chance you'll have until Havasupai Gardens, which is five miles up the trail. This is a good place to just relax for a while, and if it's hot, a good place to wait out the heat of the day and for shade to take over a bright angel. That direct sun can take its toll if you're not careful. Now, once you are rested and ready, you'll follow the trail and cross the Silver Bridge, which is one of the coolest bridges you can imagine. The bridge is made up of see-through grates for the entire 500-foot crossing. That means you're looking down and seeing the river about 50 feet below the whole way across. It is so, so cool. Once on the other side, it is time to get to work. We're about nine miles from the Bright Angel Trailhead, and we will gain more than 4,400 feet in elevation on the way out, but almost none of it for the first mile and a half as we meander along the Colorado and try to avoid some of that infamous sand that you've probably heard others complaining about. All right, if you've been in the forums or the Facebook groups, you've no doubt heard about the infamous sand on Bright Angel. Now, I'm just going to give you my opinion here. The sandy parts and the difficulty of the sandy parts, probably the most overrated part of Bright Angel Trail. The sand is not that bad. A lot of those groups make it sound like you're walking on a beach. You're walking through that kind of sand. It's not like that at all. First of all, it doesn't last for very long. Second of all, it's not overly thick. Third of all, if you just stay to the far left or far right 
of the trail when you're going through the sandy sections, it's a little firmer and a little easier. But don't worry about the sand. I'm telling you, just don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. After about a mile, we make a hard left turn and arrive at the River Rest House. There are toilets here, but no drinking water as we leave the river behind and start the ascent to the finish. It's cool walking along the river and uh, seeing the mighty Colorado for so long. Um, now we're alongside the creek and next up will be Devil's Corkscrew. We're going to follow this creek for about another mile, then we're going to go start going up the corkscrew, which is when it starts to get steep. Then we're going to have a Supai Gardens and we keep on moving. From here, the trail is relatively gradual for the next mile or so until we arrive at the base of the famed Devil's Corkscrew. This is the first time we really face a steep climb on Bright Angel, but it's not particularly long. And when you do reach the top of the corkscrew, the climb becomes more gradual again, all the way into Havasupai Gardens. Now, just after the top of the corkscrew, don't be caught off guard if, if Garden Creek is running directly on the trail. This is common, and it can be a little jarring as you're essentially hiking through the creek for several hundred feet. It is very difficult to keep your feet dry in this section, so if soggy socks bother you, this is the place you'll want to have another pair for. In the summer, it feels great. In the winter, well, not so much. A couple of miles later, we enter the long, lush oasis that is Havasupai Gardens Campground and our next chance for toilets and water. At Havasupai Gardens, we've gained right around 1,400 feet from the river, and we're just over four and a half miles from the top. All right, this is Havasupai Gardens rest area. We're now four and a half miles from the south rim. We're about four and a half miles from where we started the way up at the Silver Bridge. So about halfway now from the Silver Bridge to the top, but we still have a lot of elevation to gain uh, on the way up. There's water here uh, and also toilets. The best part uh, of going up Bright Angel at this time of the day, late afternoon, is it's shaded in. And having shade going up Bright Angel, the hardest part of the hike, is key. We still have about 3,000 feet of elevation to get to the south rim uh, over those four and a half miles. So it's a lot of relatively steep climbing and having shade is something that makes all the difference. I mean, if you're doing this late morning, you're doing this any time in the summer, um, you're going to feel what the direct sun is all about in Arizona. Uh, in the cooler months, it's not nearly as bad, but if you're here in the summertime or uh, early fall, late spring, you don't want to be hiking in the direct sun. It's not the heat that gets you as much here as the direct sun uh, on top of the heat. Uh, so you got to be hunting shade anytime it's warm out. And I would say warm is anything over, you know, 70, 75 degrees. Uh, you want to be hunting shade because it makes it so much more pleasant to hike out when you're not dealing with the direct sunlight on top of the heat, on top of the exertion. So hunting shade is a uh, major recommendation for Rim to River. A lot of people do Rim to River and they start early in the morning before the sun comes up and then they're coming up late morning, early afternoon and they're doing it right in the direct sunlight. So if you can start a little bit later, A, you'll get the great views on South Kaibab, won't be in the dark, the most iconic views in the canyon, and B, you will be hiking up at least partially in the shade as opposed to being exposed to the brutality of the Arizona sun. After Havasupai Gardens, the trail is fairly gradual again for about the next three quarters of a mile. But if you look up at this point, you can see just how far you have to go. So maybe, maybe don't look up. Now things get serious. All right, now we begin to climb. We're kind of meandering since uh, Havasupai Gardens. And now it's going to be uphill for the rest of the way. About, you know, three and a half, four miles. We still have to go. We've just started on what's called Jacob's Ladder. And most of the elevation we're going to gain on Bright Angel is going to be between now, between now and the top. So, still got a ways to go. It's time to climb. So when people talk about South Kaibab being so much steeper than Bright Angel, it's really not. Especially over the last 
three miles. I'd say the elevation profile is almost identical. Red Angel's longer, but has longer stretches of gradual or flat than South Kaibab does. So when it gets steep, it gets steep in a hurry. And you'll see, you'll hear people say that the last three miles up Bright Angel are killer. Most people say that. And you'll find out why. Just be ready for it. Here we go. The next chance for a break is at the three mile rest house. 3.1 miles and 2,100 feet worth of elevation from the top. There are toilets here and seasonal water. The water here and at the mile and a half rest house is typically turned on in late spring and turned off in late October to early November. Probably the best part in terms of your mental well being on Bright Angel is that you can break this, this hike into mile and a half chunks. So you've got Havasupai Gardens at essentially four and a half miles. Then a mile and a half after that, you have a three mile rest house. A mile and a half from here, we've got the mile and a half rest house. A mile and a half after that, we're on the south rim. So it's more manageable when you can break it up into those mile and a half chunks as opposed to just slogging on and on and on, not knowing if you're ever gonna to get to the end. There are breaks every mile and a half from Havasupai Gardens up. Havasupai Gardens, three mile rest house, mile and a half rest house, then near at the top. It's a great way to keep, uh, to keep motivated and just have little victories along the way. This is the hardest part of the hike we're entering. People say these last three miles feel endless, and they can because it's relentlessly uphill. More than 2,000 feet of elevation you're gonna gain the last three miles. So it can, it can be a battle, especially if you're finishing a rim to rim or finishing a rim to river, river and you already have a lot of miles on your legs. About this time, people are ready to be done. As great as it is, they're ready to feel that sense of accomplishment and be done with this thing. So break it up into mile and a half chunks. Before you know it, You'll be there. The next stop is the mile and a half rest house. This is where the trail starts getting much busier and you start seeing more tourists and even kids out to get a little taste of the canyon. We have a mile and a half to go. Actually 1.6, but don't tell anybody. Almost there, sun setting, beautiful night in the canyon on the rim to river hike. Now there are two landmarks of note to look out for on the last mile and a half, where we'll gain the final 1,100 feet of elevation. The first is the lower tunnel. When we pass through that, there's just a mile to go. The second is the upper tunnel. When you pass through that, there's just about a quarter mile to go. This stretch is also your best chance to see some of the canyon's bighorn sheep population. They're not always around, but if you see them, it is quite a treat. Eventually, we see the brown building that is the Kolb Studio, and we make our last right turn. Keep going straight all the way to the top. Don't take the spur that's off to the left. And just like that, you will be on pavement and see the iconic Bright Angel Trailhead sign and know that you have made it. Rim to River is complete. Don't be surprised if you get a little emotional when you finish. It is such an amazing physical and mental accomplishment in one of the seven natural wonders of the world. So be very proud. So that is the iconic rim to river to rim hike here at the Grand Canyon. I always think that's a real good measuring point, kind of just see where you're at. If you can do rim to river to rim, which is 16 and a half miles, if you don't go to Phantom Ranch, 17 and a half if you do go to Phantom, if you can do that, you can do rim to rim. So it's a good place to measure yourself, see where you're at, if rim to rim is your goal. But rim to river in itself, an iconic bucket list hike in its own right. Yeah, there is nothing quite like it. All right, the numbers, 16 and a half miles with 4,780 feet of elevation lost down South Kaibab and 4,380 feet of elevation gained up Bright Angel. 
Guys, if you have found value in this show, we would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe and leave a review on whatever platform you're listening on. It means so much to us to know that you're listening, and it also helps others find the show, which exists for the sole purpose of helping everyone have the best possible experience in the Grand Canyon. You can also find us across social media, including YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Just search for Grand Canyon Hiker Dude. All right, that's it for this time. My name is Brian Special, reminding you to take the first step, embrace the journey, and hike your own hike. And we'll see you next time on the Grand Canyon Hiker Dude Show, presented by Bright Angel Outfitters. Thank you.